I, I, that's what I want him to do for me. And I'm sure that's what we all want. Very lovely thing, Brother Egbert. The Lord bless you. Brother Wormo, I'm sure the radio audience appreciated your singing this morning. It's certainly a marvelous time down to breakfast this morning, the full gospel businessman's where we had the wonderful time of fellowship with these people. These singers sing. And now, um, I hope they... We get to go over to Phoenix with us also. Uh, hope you can pray over that. We'd like to. Well, that's very fine. Well, I guess for the argument, right? We might as well just take them overseas with them. They can sing in Swedish. And many, that'd be just fine. <laughs> well, we're very thankful to be here tonight under the tent again to give thanks and praise to the Lord Jesus, our blessed Savior, for all His goodness and mercy to us. Today's kind of been a weakening day for me. Very seldom it happens, but this morning in the meeting in the Christian businessman, the Lord broke into us to giving visions in the meeting this morning, the Christian businessman, down at the meeting. And at the, sometimes when it's all day like that, it's kind of hard to get away from. And at nighttime, you're weak again. Now, tomorrow is our finishing of this, uh, of this campaign, uh, this time, and we're going to have it in the afternoon, our closing service, so that everyone can come. No matter in your churches, we try to, to have our services so it won't interfere, if we possibly can, with, with the other churches. And so we, we want every person to stand at their post of duty. Now, if there's any strangers here, there's many people and many fine churches around through this valley here, and I'm sure they'd be glad to have you in the morning at their church. And I don't know them. I have never no more than just shake their hands here on the platform. Life to me, I love people. People think I'm an isolationist, but I'm not. I love people, but I... You just can't be a servant of man and God at the same time. You, you just got to stay away to myself and pray and be ready for the service of the Lord at night so I can try to help my fellow man. Now, there's, I think there's some uh, four square assembly and all, all kinds of churches through here. If you're around here, go here. If you're down in Glendale... I don't know any of the churches there, but we've been meeting with the Businessmen's Fellowship there, and I met some fine brethren. This morning I met a fine Lutheran brethren. I forget what his name was at this time. He spoke for us a while this morning, a very fine man. He assured all the people that this big Lutheran church down there had plush seats. If anybody like to sleep, come on down. At the slept, that is the slept during time of church. He quite a sense of humor, a very fine brethren. And I uh, was certainly enjoying that fellowship this morning, seemingly, at the Full Gospel Businessman. On down in Los Angeles, there's many fine churches. Brother Jaggers, many of you know him, Brother O.L. Jaggers, the World Church. He has a fine Sunday school. Then there is the McPherson Temple, the Angeles Temple, I believe it's called, from Sister McPherson's uh, Temple. I never got to meet Sister McPherson in this life. I expect to in the life that is to come. A wonderful woman, the first time when I come to Los Angeles, I went up to Forest Lawn, bowed my head to the side of her grave, and gave thanks to God for her gallant life while she was here on earth, for our Sister McPherson. There's Brother Cop. Many of you know him, and I thank God. Billy Opie's holding a revival now. I believe I heard on the radio program at the, the Angeles Temple. I've never met Billy as I know of personally. I might have. If, I, if someone, if he has, I'm sorry. I just don't recall just meeting him. I might have done it in a ministerial meeting sometime and just don't recall it at the time. But I have met Dr. Tiford and Ralph McPherson and those fine men there, Dr. Cummings and some fine man. And I met Mr. Cop. Uh, Leroy is the boy's name, I forget. He used to own the place where Brother Jaggers is now, the World Church. That's where the, 
my old brother that's just went upstairs, Congressman Upshaw, Willie Upshaw, was healed at the church which is now the World Church when Brother Kopp was there after being in England on crutches and wheelchairs and cots for 66 years, I believe it was. And his widow, a very fine Christian woman, how many ever know Brother Upshaw? Let's see your hand. Well, bless your heart. A wonderful character. He's gone on, and I'd say the same thing as sitting before me, or if he was in, somewhere in Los Angeles tonight. He's really a fine brother. And the Lord blessed him and used him in a great way with his testimony of healing, being a man of his caliber. That night at the temple there, when the Holy Ghost gave a vision of him walking after being an invalid 66 years. His widow is writing um, a book, or I believe it's Brother Willie's Healing, and, and they're featuring the story there, I think, and my name's to appear in the book. I'm to see her, I think, of, she's to see Brother Oregon Bright tonight. I'd like to see her a little bit before leaving. Los Angeles tomorrow. And so Brother Cop has been a good friend of mine. There's many, many fine churches. Wish I had time, and I don't know all of them to call them, but find you a good church tomorrow and go to church. And uh, tomorrow afternoon at 2.30, is that right, Brother? 2.30, the services will start here at the Tabernacle which really a tent is the original tabernacle. Did you know that? The tabernacle in the wilderness was made out of was a tent, skins put together. And be out tomorrow afternoon, and we'll close early enough. You can go to your own church of choice tomorrow night again, serving the Lord. We trust that God will give you all great meeting. And now... Uh, tomorrow afternoon, if the Lord willing, I want to try to pray for as many sick people as I possibly can. We've got a lot of cards out. We want to pray for as many as possibly can and be speaking early. So I want to be here to begin the service myself at least by a quarter till three or three o'clock, just as quick as we can. So try to be in 2.30 to hear the final singing of Brother Eckberg and Brother Wormo, who's been a blessing. How many has enjoyed these brothers singing? Let's see your hands. Oh, thank you. I've often thought that, you know, God healed Brother Eckberg. He had a, you all know about it, I suppose. The doctors give him just a little bit to live, sarcomas cancer. And God Almighty, one night in the Chicago meeting, when I was just under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, Felt led and walked over there and laid hands on him when he was in a serious condition. Brother Wormall has had a nervous breakdown and been very sick. God's healed him, and I looked at him this morning. When he's singing those songs, I, I tell you, something on the inside of him just in a quiver. The thanks to what God done for him. And now, and they'll be here tomorrow afternoon to be, uh, be in the service and sing for us. Now, here's letters that's going to the sick and the afflicted, and may the Lord add his blessings as we pray for them. Now, each one, they come get them. I believe there's another one right there, Brother. Um, they, we want you to do this now. After the altar call tonight is over, I think that's right, isn't it, Brother? After the altar call, when you want them to come get their... After the altar call. Yes, sir. After the altar call. Um, come get your, your handkerchief. And if you happen to miss and need one, just write me one. Now uh, it'll come. There'll be a, a. It'll be made up in a form. Something you want to announce? Something? No. She's asking about your books again. Um, books. The, the many's asked, and someone that wrote me a letter the other day and said, "Brother Bram, send me one of your books." And I got a couple. Now the reason that we didn't bring them. First thing, I didn't have room. And these books, uh, how many's ever read them? Let's see your hand. Well, that's fine. Uh, you know, I, I didn't. I wrote a little one one time, and it's called Jesus the Same Yesterday, Today, and Forever. I wrote another one called The Heavenly Vision. 
all their little bitty things sold about 60, 70 pages in them, I think, and sold for about 15 cents or something. And it had to be rewritten a dozen times for the grammar's sake of it. So my wife got it. No, it wasn't her grammar. It was mine. <laughs> it was uh, both of us together, honey. Couldn't have good grammar, could we? So say someone wrote me a little note last night and said, Brother Bram, have your wife to come up on the platform and a baby. You don't want her to faint, do you? <laughs> She's as bashful as I am. So... And so, <laughs> I tell you what, if I can talk to her real lovely at the service night, we'll have her come up here tomorrow afternoon, would you? Well, she so thank you. If there's any credit to be given to the Branham family, give it to her. She's deserving. Mother of these three little children now, stayed home. You know what? This is... We have been together perhaps this time just about as long as we ever have been since we've been married. That's right. We're never together, never hardly see each other. And I'm gone all the time. And when at home, it's worse than it is anywhere else. The people just coming and going all the time. And I've seen the time when Ma and it was just, see, it isn't just one little group of people. It's all around the world. And people are coming in from India, from Africa, from everywhere, coming into Jeffersonville. Now concerning the book, Mr. Stadscliffe, he's a chaplain in the army, wrote the one called A Prophet Visits Africa. And Reverend Gordon Lindsay wrote the other one, which is called A Man Sent from God. Uh, they're neither one, they're, they, the man wrote them, and the way I get them, I just buy them, you see, at, at uh, I believe it's 40 cents less on the book. And then I, I pay them for the book, and I have to sell one for a dollar and a half. That's what they sell it for, and the other one's for two dollars. And that's what the price is on them. Then I give them 40 cents less for the book. Then I have to take it and handle it and ship it and sand it. Oh, my. If the meeting has to hold it up. And then i told every time that people are selling them, if there is any time an old dad or a mother comes by, reaching down them one of them little pocketbooks to get some money and hasn't got enough money to pay for it, give it to them anyhow. That's right. Because it's not to make money out of. And if you can't even. I've lost, if it would be counted, hundreds of dollars on the books. And right now, I, I don't mean to say this. See, I'm, I, I just can't get any right now. I'll get some pretty soon, and I'll have them. I haven't got any at this time. That's the reason we haven't got any with us. But I, I'll get some again pretty soon as soon as uh, I can afford to do it. Now, but, and, I, and if you want them, you just write to me at Jeffersonville, Indiana, and, I, and mention you want the book and which one. Man Sent from God, Brother Lindsay wrote that. A Prophet Visits Africa, Julius Statscale Cliff. Uh, he's from, um, he's uh, with Billy Graham and them there in um, that's where he's Wheaton, is that, no, is that where he's, uh, Wheaton, I believe it is, is where he was from, and he's um, a chaplain in the army, he's way in, a, way in Greenland or, or somewhere in the Eskimo lands now, I got a card from him the other day, and he was standing in snow, said it was, I forget how far below zero, and summertime didn't mean anything there, <laughs> so they're up there, Iceland, that's where it's at, way up in uh, Iceland, and so... Um, I'll have, we'll have them pretty soon, and you just write to me, and I'll be glad to send them right to you. And then for a handkerchief, if you want one, a little ribbon, I, I'll be glad to send that to you. No charges at all. And just um, and I, when you get it, it'll have a form letter telling you what to do and how to use it. But now that form is certainly mimographed, that's true. But every one of those little handkerchiefs, little cloths, I prayed over them. Now, I, I, the Bible said, do unto others as you'd have others do unto you. And if I had confidence in you you, and believe that God heard your prayer, and I, I, I wouldn't want some uh, secretary to pray over a ribbon that was sent to my child if it was sick, I, I'd want you to pray over it. And that's the way I do it. And I pray over each one and send thousands a week all over the world. And I would be glad to send it to you, no charges at all. Just send and ask for it, it's yours. Now, shall we pray for these that cheer right now, Father? 
Our Heavenly Father, we come to Thee as humbly as we know how, first to give thanks for all Your goodness and mercy. And, O oh God, I, I'm so glad that You've made a way of escape for us. Out of every corner, Thou hast made a way of escape. And now, laying before me is handkerchiefs that's going to sick and afflicted people. They are here where night after night has the Holy Spirit been here ministering right at this platform, moving around and revealing to the people what to do. And He loves them. And in commemoration of this, they're laying these handkerchiefs up here to be prayed over. Many of them, Father, are going to little sick children and uh, all around, and some of them are going to helpless people. But, Father, we pray, Thou, who is comfort to the helpless, we pray that You will heal every one of them, get glory out of it, as I, in commemorations of Your Word, believing, laying my hands as it was over them, just in a token to let You know, Lord, that with the depths of my heart, the sincerity of my heart, I ask with all that was within me, heal every one, Lord. Uh, I ask this for God's glory. And thou hast said, the affectional, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And we know that we're not righteous, but the righteousness of the Lord Jesus. We come in his righteousness, confessing that we have none, but in his righteousness. With prayer, we ask that it will avail for these sick people. And, Lord, speak to us tonight through the Word. Then come down among us in a great signs and wonders perform here tonight and heal. For we ask that in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, brother. Don't forget now, tell your pastors that we sure appreciate all that they've done for us, and tomorrow uh, we, we won't, if you can, you won't have no church, just dismiss and come on over and let's have a lot of fellowship. You like fellowship? How many of you ever heard of Brother Bosworth, the old brother, Dr. Bosworth, man? I said, Brother Bosworth, I love fellowship. He said, Brother Bram, you know what fellowship is? And I said... Well, I think so, Brother Bob. He said it's two fellows in one ship. <laughs> and that's what it is. And we're kind of close together. Two fellows and one ship. Now, tonight, for a few moments, quickly as we can, to the written Word. I just love the Word of God, don't you? And we've just had such a wonderful time this week fellowshipping around the Word. And I noticed tonight, we got a couple stretchers in a wheelchair again. God has been wonderful, healing all. I never heard any report of two little boys that I've seen here one night, just one night only. I just don't know. I wish someone would check up and find out if they got healed. They were in the meeting. Of course, when the other part for the visions come, I don't understand from man on unless I get it off the tapes over here. But then or, or my son or wife or someone tells me what happened. And I'm wondering about those two little boys. I understand that several of the cops and stretchers that were healed and taken out, and there was, um, I got a radio call today, or not, or a telephone call from a lady that has been paralyzed for a uh, long time, I might not have got it just right. It's something that she was here. I offered prayer for her, and she was here. It's something that had been paralyzed for years and years and years. But she can walk now, and she said that she had been to a doctor, and the doctor said she would walk disfigured, like uh, not a human, like the dog or something. She said, I'm coming back again. To walk out like a human being, just real, walk good, she kind of stumbled. But isn't that wonderful? After being paralyzed for probably 25 years or something, and so we're happy that she's that far advanced. May the Lord bless her. 
And an old lady sat here for a long time, may be present right tonight, night before last, has been arthritic case. One of the women here would raise up her hand somewhere if she's in the meeting tonight, been sitting here in the wheel, last one of the wheelchairs that we knew of to be healed. All right. Said something has come over. She got up and took her wheelchair and pushed it on out and went home. And so we're just happy for that, aren't we? Somebody's mother. Just think of it. How God in his goodness helps them people. Now, around the word, I, I just love it, and the fellowship we have around this word as interdenominational people, and, and while we're under this tent anyhow, we are interdenominational. And we want you to be the same under here, to be able to just, or when you go out also, just love all Christians and love all sinners to make them Christians. And now over in the book of Job, we've been so long in Genesis, I thought it would be a change tonight to get over in Job, just for a few moments, in the 19th chapter, and beginning with the 25th and reading the 27th verse inclusive for a scripture reading. Very beautiful, very appropriate, and I love to read of Job. Now, Heavenly Father, come to us, get the word, and may the Holy Spirit deliver to every heart tonight just as we have need of. Get glory into thyself, for we ask that in Jesus' name, the only one who can interpret the word. Amen. Job 19 and 25 and 26, 27. For I know, I like that to begin with, don't you? Not I guess so, I hope so, but I know the surety my Redeemer liveth. And at the last days he'll stand upon the earth. And though after the skin worms destroys this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself. Mine eye shall behold, and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. Now for a text, I want to take Redeemer, Redemption. And may the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. Uh, Job was the oldest book in the Bible. Job was written before Genesis was written. Before Moses written Genesis, they claimed they had the book of Job, a great prince. And through that we are taught of trial. And practically, the other day setting up, or not the other day, the last time I was here up at Mount Wilson, and hearing that astronomer giving the about the different stars and calling them, and Job named them here in the Bible. Long time ago. You know, man never did know there was paths in the air till just recently, and Job knew it way back a long time ago. You know, science just found out less than 20 years ago that you had skin on your teeth, but Job knew that 6,000 years ago. Sure. He certainly did. He, many things. Very beautiful book. And a good book on redemption. I like the word redemption. Redeem means to be brought back. Redeem. As I said this morning, the Christian businessman talking on reconciliation, I said redemption means that the devil puts you in the pawn shop and Jesus come taking you out. That's right. Uh, love nature, and I seen one time a little story of a, a man that had caught a crow in a trap, and he tied him up to scare the rest of the crows away, jumping up and down. Well, the poor old crow, he, he stood there and jumped up and down, and the farmer didn't feed him or anything. He got so poor, he, he just couldn't hardly stand up any longer. So there was a good man came by one day and seen the old crow looking so poor and thin, he just untied him. 
And all the crows that fly over are, come on, Johnny Crow, winter's coming, let's go south. Get out of this cold weather coming. But you know what? The old crow had been tied up so long till he still thought he was tied. He didn't know that somebody had redeemed him. And that's the way a lot of people are tonight, friends. You've just been in sin so long, serving the enemy, till you think you're still tied when really you're loose. Let's go to Calvary tonight. Get out of the things of the world. Oh, he's wonderful. Know that we are free. He who the Son has made free is free indeed. And you was free to Calvary when Jesus paid the all-sufficient price to God the Father when he suffered in flesh and died and repaid the price of your redemption, that you could be redeemed by to God. Many of you know the story of redemption in the Bible. Many of you scholars here, students, ministers, teachers, and many times little housewives, it's not teachers, really read the Bible, how the God's plan of redemption. I used to tell when his at my tabernacle of stories speaking on redemption about a, on the law of redemption. That gets out of Exodus, of course, and Leviticus, to so the Leviticus law. So I used to say, if an old mother horse gave birth to the little mule, and when the little fellow was born, and his ears was broke down. Now, that's a bad mule to begin with. His cross-eyed is not needed. His tail stuck right straight up. What a horrible-looking mule. If the mother could look around to the little fellow and he could see himself, he'd say, Uh-oh, they'll never feed me. So as soon as the master comes out and finds me, they'll probably just kill me because I'm not worth feeding. Well, that's just about the way we sinners are. Do you know that? Just not worth very much to God's kingdom. But you know, if that old mother understood and could speak back to her little colt, she could say, but wait a minute, son. You were born under a birthright. You were my first. You were born under a birthright. And just because that you're born that way, you know, the priest will never see you. The only thing that will happen, the man of the house will have to go out into the flock and get a lamb that's perfect and without a blemish on it and take it over and the priest will never look at the mule. He'll examine the lamb. Because the mule is born under the birthright, so the lamb, without a blemish, has to die for the mule that's so disfigured. And the, the lamb dies, the perfect lamb dies, so the disfigured mule can live. What a beautiful picture of redemption. Oh, my. The perfect Lamb of God died that we poor, alienated, disfigured human beings could live again. What a picture of redemption. While that little mule could just kick his little old heels up in the air and jump around and have a big time. Why? Because he's redeemed. That's the way a person that's been redeemed and understands it. You get emotionally. You can't help it. When the, the story was told that he, had, he could live because the perfect lamb died in his place, the little fellow could rejoice. But, uh, that's the way I felt the day that the story came to my heart. I knew he, I was a sinner. I couldn't even find a church that made an altar call. I went from one to the other. No one made an altar call. No one invited. They were all talking about flowers and the new bridge that went across the river. I wasn't interested in that. 
You read that newspaper. I want to hear the Bible, the Word. You know how I first got saved? I might stop here to tell you. The first thing, I got me a pencil and paper and went out and was going to write a letter to Jesus. I've been a woodsman all my life, game warden for years, lived in the woods, trapped and hunted all my life. Now, I know that he was a god of the forest because I could see him out there, his nature, the way he made it. I was going to write me a letter and tack it up on a tree in the woods that when he come by, he could read it. I didn't know how to get saved, so we're very poor. And Dad had been out in the country during the time of the Depression and had a little sack full of potatoes and somebody giving, poured them out in a box in the pantry and laid the sack down. I went and got the sack, went out to a little old shed, water, wet, knelt down there. I said, now what am I going to do? I never said a prayer in my life, never heard one as far as I know. So how am I going to talk to him? I said, well, I, I heard people say if they talked to him and they tell me he was a man, so if he was a man, he ought to understand as a man. So I said, Mr. Jesus, I wish you'd come here just a minute. I want to talk to you and tell you how bad I've been. <laughs> that sounds kind of funny, but I was picking on my fingernail. I said, Mr. Jesus, I've been an awful bad person. I, I want to talk to you. Now, if you'll listen to me, will you answer me and say, I hear you? I listened. Nobody answered me. <laughs> oh, my. I said, maybe I didn't say it right. I'll try it again. I said, Mr. Jesus, would you come here just a moment, kind sir? I said, I've done some horrible things, and I, I, I want to talk it over with you. I, I promise you, if you let me live, I, I, I would... Uh, I serve you, and I, I want to kind of talk things over with you. I listen. I said, would you answer me, sir? So I don't want to be talking to the wind. I said, I, I want you to answer me. I said, will you do it? I listen. Nobody talked to me. Well, I said, I'm just, I heard other people say, God talked to me, but my poor kiddish heart, I didn't understand. I said, well, I'm so mean he won't even talk to me. I haven't even got a chance now. And I started bawling like a baby. Then he talked to me. Amen. He, he has to get right first. The redemption. Oh, when I rose up from there, I walked in on clouds, I felt like. I didn't know how to shout. So you know how I relieved myself like that? There's a big levee run behind the place. We live in a little old poor shanty like that. And Mama, I got real nervous. I was looking at the Bible, and she said, What's the matter? I picked up my songbook, and she said, What's the matter with you? I said, I, I don't know, Mama. And I got outside and got up on the railroad track and run down the railroad track, jumping way up in the air, real high. I didn't know what to do. I just felt real good. And so that's the only thing I know to do. You believe in re getting that way? Sure. I love it. That's what's the matter today. We got away from that heartfelt religion. An old fellow down south once, he said, said to the old slave, he said, Mose, what do you mean by heartfelt religion? He said, well, boss, it's good. He said, there is no such a thing as heartfelt religion. Mose said, boss, there's just one thing you made a mistake in. Said you ought to have said there's no such a thing as heartfelt religion as far as you know. <laughs> but he no different. That's right. Hell. I don't mean you have to feel it to receive it now, but if you got it, you feel it. Then. Amen. Little fellow one time built a barn, a farmer. Oh my beautiful barn. And but he was the laziest farmer in the country. He had tractors and things, and he let his farm grow up in weeds. And there's another farmer over from him didn't have very much of a barn, but he was an industrious farmer, so he raised a lot of alfalfa. Put a big hayloft up full. That year there was a little calf born in each barn, the new barn, the big church where they have the. Excuse me, I oughtn't have said that. See, but anyhow, I like little missions and things where you can really get out and shake hands and. You know, and feel good. Big church is all right. They got God in there. But if we get our, you know, today that's the trouble of it. We got, we're putting all the emphasis on a big church instead of on Christ. Amen. That's what's the trouble. 
And, you know, this great, big, fine barn, there was a little calf barn over there, but the poor little fellow didn't have nothing to eat. Weeds. All they could feed him was weeds. But over the other barn wasn't so good. It had a few cracks in it and kind of old and shabby looking, but little calf over there had good hay all went along. When springtime come, they turned them both out in the corral. When they got into the corral, the little fat calf, he was just this fat and round vitamin fed, you know. <laughs> he was really feeling good. So he just began to buck and cut up and jump around, have a great big time, that spring wind blowing, you know, like a Russian mighty wind. You know what I'm talking about. And coming down, he's just having a good time, all vitamin fed up. You know, that's the way a good church is when it's all fed up with the Word and when the Holy Ghost really goes to fallen. You know, he go jumping around a little. And the first thing you know, the little calf over on the other side, so weak, the little fellow couldn't hardly stagger out. The wind by blowed him down. But he peeped through the crack of the fence and looked over where that other calf was, and he's like, such fanaticism. <laughs> he just starved, that was all. That's what's the matter with a lot of people, even right here in California. Amen. Right. Undernourished, lacking of vitamins. Read the Word. Taste cometh by hearing, hearing of the Word. Don't build yourself upon emotions, upon excitement, upon big churches. Build upon the solid rock, Christ Jesus, and His Word. Heavens and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. He came to redeem Job here, and uh, speaking of him as a redeemer, how everything had gone wrong for him seemingly. You know, God hasn't promised a flower bed of ease, but he's promised a lot of mountains, but he's promised grace to go over every one of them. I like Job speaking. Watch. After Job went through his trials and testings as he come upon every child of God, first has to be tried, tested. In other words, they have to be trained, like child training. Take some whipping, straighten up. You know how to act then, how to conduct yourself as a Christian. God gives you a little bit of whipping once in a while, turns you around a few times. You know what it's all about. Lays you on your back so you can look up. Sure. Then we find out, after all these trials and testings, one little point we want to get to. Do you like to read between the lines? Well, the best part of the Bible is wrote between the lines. Sure it is. I told you the other night, the Bible is hid from every seminary. You don't know God by the seminary experience. You know Him by a born-again experience. Right? Seminary is nothing against them now. Not at all. But that's not, that's not it. You put all the emphasis on that. See? How well is He educated? How many degrees has He got? See? It isn't that. It's how much bags is in the knees of His trousers and prayers is what I like to know about. That's the best thing. Yes. Then, when he was in that condition, Job looked up to God and knew he stood firm upon the burnt offering. He knew that he had a Redeemer that would come someday, and he said, I'll see him at the end time. I want you just a little between the lines now to read. As he said, I've hid it from the eyes of the wise and prudent and will reveal it to babes. You don't have to be wise. Yeah, he that humbles himself shall be exalted. He that exalts himself shall be made a base, see? be brought down. So just see how little and how simple you can live before God if you want to get anything. Sure. Then, when God writing his letter, then he's got it hid, as I told you, like a, a letter from my wife. She writes me a letter, but I read between the lines because I love her, and I, I can just about know what she's talking about. No matter what she says on the paper, I know what she means, see, because I love her. And that's the way you do 
When you love the Lord Jesus and you pick up the Bible, it's a different book then. If you're born again, God gets a hold of it again to reveal himself to you through the Word. And then, Job, notice, he said, I know my Redeemer liveth. Watch his prophecy. First, his comforters come and accuse him of being a secret sinner because he was sick. But God sent Elihu down, a representative of God, meaning Christ, El Allah for El for thee, and so forth. The name breaking down was the. And when he come, he told Job, never accused him of being a sinner, but he told him that there was coming a just one who could stand in the breach and put his hand on a sinful man, the holy God, and breach the way. Then the Spirit struck the prophet when he got into the will of God got back into the channel, and he, the Spirit struck him, and he stood up and said, I know my Redeemer liveth. The last days he'll stand on the earth. Notice, when Job died, here's just a little drop, and then we'll go right on with redemption. Notice, when Job died, before he died, specifying and the place that he was buried, that had something to do with it. And along came... Abraham, and when Sarah died, his sweetheart and wife, when she died, it was strange, but Abraham goes up into the land to where Job was buried and buried Sarah in the same land where Job was buried. Now watch, they were prophets. That wasn't written in the Scripture now. And notice, when Abraham died, he slept with Sarah, the same place. Abraham begot Isaac. And when Isaac died, he was buried with Abraham. And when Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob died down in Egypt. But before he died, he made his prophet's son, Joseph, come down and put his hand on his hip, where the angel had touched him and changed his walk, and swore by God that he had not bury him down in Egypt. Wonder why? Wonder why? Now, it wasn't written, but they were spiritual men. They read between the lines. And he said, Take me back up into Canaan. Bury me up there with my father Abraham, with Isaac. And when, watch Joseph. When he died, he said, Don't you bury my bones down here. But someday... God's going to visit you, so you take my bones before you and bury them with my father. The same place where Job was buried. Same place where Sarah and Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Rebecca, and Leah, and all was buried up in the promised land. I wonder why. God, here it is, God hadn't promised the resurrection down there in Egypt. But they knew that the resurrection was going to be in the promised land. And on the day when Jesus finally come, the Redeemer, they did to him like they said they would. He died, buried. And on the third day he rose and those that were buried up there with him, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the saints come out of the grave. They know the resurrection was going to take place in Palestine because it was spiritual revealed to them. That's the reason why I say you can have all your world you want, all your fancy things, dangles, all your educations and things you want to, but bury me in Jesus Christ. For those that are in Christ, God will bring with him in the first resurrection. So it, just let the Holy Spirit reveal that to you. Redeemed by his blood, those that are in Christ will God bring with him at his coming. What difference does it make what the world wants to call you? Fanatic or whatever it may be, just stay in Christ. Redemption. Beautiful story of redemption. I believe for the next few moments, let's view something. A beautiful little story comes into my mind. A book that's sharp in the Bible and gives out the very lines of redemption. And that's the book of Ruth. Many people just pass over that book. But it's the most beautiful story of the Lord Jesus, almost of the Old Testament, during the time of the judges when the first thing, there come a time when Israel got away from God, 
And when they did, the water supply was withheld. And when people get away from God today, the water supply is withheld. All other blessings will be withheld. Notice, there was a man named Amalek and his wife Neoma. And they had two sons and they left the land to sojourn over in Moab because they heard there was bread in Moab. While they were over there, the two sons grew up and married two girls, one of them named Oropa and one of them named Ruth. And the two beautiful pictures of the churches. And Neoma, a perfect picture of the Orthodox Church. Neoma, a picture of the Orthodox Church. Oropa, a picture of the lukewarm Gentile Church. And Ruth, a picture of the bride. Such a beautiful lay as God has laid all of His Word by inspiration. You believe it? Yes. Notice, then sickness, Amalek died, the two boys died, and the women was left alone. Ruth took her two daughter-in-laws and kissed them and said, Now go back to your mother's house and find comfort, for I hear that over in the homeland there's rain and they've got food. Now, listen close and be in prayer. And we'll hurry now to get to the prayer line for the next few moments. Now, I said there's a homeland that's got food. And I'm something, I must go back home. And she kissed her daughter-in-laws and told them goodbye. And so Orpa, a type of the church, normally... The church formal was willing to kiss her mother-in-law goodbye, craving the things of the world in her old former life, turned back to her idols because her mother-in-law discouraged her a little bit, saying, both of them said, now, I'm too old to have children, and if I would be married again and have children, would you wait for them? No, go back to your mother's and have find comfort. Well, that's the way with the lukewarm church member. Just the first little thing comes along. They're discouraged and willing to turn back. Oh, what a pity. But Ruth, not so, a type of the bride. When her mother-in-law said, Now, Ruth, you return back. She said, As the Lord liveth, I'll not leave you. I'll go with you. Your people will be my people. Your God shall be my God, and your where you die, I'll die. Where you're buried, I'll be buried. Make it a choice. That's where every man has to come to in life sometimes, is make a decision. You have to make a choice. You had to make a choice whether he's going to have an education or not. You had to make a choice who is going to be your wife. You had them, there has to be decisions and choices made in life, and this may be the night that you have your final call to make your choice whom you're going to serve. Maybe your final time laying your dad on the stretcher, you mother over there, young lady. It may be your final time to make your choice. But Ruth, Beautifully. Wish we had time to dig into those old nuggets and bring them out, but we have them. We just have to hit the highlights. Notice, Ruth was willing to forsake her idols, forsake her past life, forsake her people, forsake everything, and return with Neoma. No matter what the circumstances was, she was willing to go on. That's the way every man that comes to Christ must first be willing, regardless. Amen. I would like to tell people, oh, you're going to prosper and be a rich man now, and God's going to bless you, you ain't going to have no sickness. I don't promise them that, because God doesn't promise them that. I say, if you're really born again in your heart, I don't care how rough the road gets, you'll still hold on to God's unchanging hand. No matter what it lays before me. If Jesus goes with me, I'll go. Hallelujah. 
As long as he goes, that's all necessarily. And she returned. And oh, the picture now. Ruth, the Gentile church just coming in. And Neoma, the Jewish church, coming back. And notice, when they turned and went, got back to the homeland, they came in just in barley season. Now, anyone knows what barley season was. It's Pentecost, the first fruits. How the Gentile church was brought in under the wings of Almighty God at Pentecost. The Gentile church, the bride. And when she returned, it was barley season. And now they had a, a kinsman there by the name of, of Boaz. And he was a rich man. And Neoma sent Ruth out into the fields to glean and Boaz field, which was the custom in that day and still today, right in that same field, made glean behind the reapers. So what was she gleaning for? She was gleaning for food. And that's what the Gentile church did, come in behind the Orthodox church, picking up all they had, which was the Old Testament, gleaning. What God give to the prophets, the Gentile church, the young church, the Holy Spirit, church of the firstborn, gleaning. And when Boaz came out to see her, to see how everything was going on, a righteous man, a type of Christ. Boaz was a type of Christ. When he come out to look upon his harvest field, he was the Lord of the harvest. Christ is the Lord of the harvest. And he came out to look upon the field and notice, as soon as his eyes fell upon the beautiful Ruth, it was love at the first sight. He said, who is this young maid out here who is gleaning in my field? Some of them said, she's a virtuous woman. She come back from Neoma, some of your kinfolks, and she's out here gleaning. He went over to her and he said, now look, don't you leave this field. I love that. Wish we had time to park there for a few minutes. <laughs> don't you leave this field. That's the way it is. Stay put. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I know you think I'm just a little wild, but I, look. Stay where you are. Every man that's born to the Spirit of God, when he's setting Christ, his eyes is on Calvary, right in the middle of the road. If he's just a little bit emotional, the first thing you know, he'll work out over here to the side, and the first thing, he'll become a fanatic if you don't watch. And if he's just a little starchy, educated, he'll work over on this side and be so cold and stiff and starchy, take all the Spirit out of him. If the devil can't keep you from seeing the truth, he'll push you off at the deep end with it. Now, I think that's exactly what happened to the Pentecostal church. Now, that's right. Exactly. Went off at the deep end. Stay put! I, you might not love me after this, but at the judgment bar, you will. Look! Oh, don't run away! Stay in Christ! Don't go after gifts and everything. Stay with the giver. Amen. God will take care of the gifts. Stay there. Yes. Hallelujah. yes, stay in the field. said, pick up a few of these gleaning behind. And said, don't you leave this field. Stay right here. Now, you can draw in conclusions what I was fixing to say there. And so stay here now on, until night. Till the sun's gone. And when Christ baptizes you with the Holy Spirit, stay put right in Christ. That first love is in your heart. Never let it get cold. Just keep loving Him. Move on. Notice, then, He said, Now, I've commanded that these young men don't bother you. Oh, what a spiritual background that's got. You know, some of these sickle fritzes. Little old half-brothered churches, you know. Hey, you holy roar! 
I've commanded them to leave you alone. Amen. It's my heritage. He had in his mind what he was going to do. So I commanded him to leave you alone. But you follow fast behind the reapers. And so when it comes midday and you get tired, come over, sit down on the tree, and take the bars of bread and dip it right in with the rest of them. I like that, that fellowship, you see. Get right around under the shade tree. Don't you love to get under there? Just dip right in with the rest of them. <laughs> Amen. Then he said to the reapers, he said, you see that young lady that's right behind you? Yes. So let the gleaning be heavy. And said, every once in a while, drop a handful on purpose. I love those handfuls, don't you? Amen. Amen. Glean behind the reapers. Drop a handful on purpose. That she could get all oh, how Ruth felt when she grabbed a whole handful. The reaper turned around and said, It's all right. It's all right. Oh, and God gives us an old-fashioned pouring out of the Holy Spirit. A handful. Do it on purpose. And notice, then when after the day was over, she beat out all of her wheat and put it in her little apron and tuck it to her. Mother-in-law and her mother-in-law advised her. If you want to find out advice on how to do, Paul said, after giving in the Hebrews 10, the great chapter of faith, he said, now seeing that we're compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every sin and run with race this patience that's set before us. Lay aside every weight and the sin, rather, that is easily beset us, and run with patience. Now, it's advising us to read the Old Testament. It advises us back there when man done wrong, God may have punished him for it. When man done right, God blessed them for it. So Ruth was being advised by Neoma, the old church, what she must do. So when it come time for the great feast, right after harvest, and that's what's on now, the great feast. And watch what Ruth did. She goes down and fixes herself all up and makes herself look pretty and clean. And when Boaz laid on the floor at night, young woman, beautiful, morally righteous, she had to put her confidence in Boaz without knowing him. No matter what anybody had to say, she trusted him as a righteous man. She had to. And everyone that comes to Christ must do likewise. You've got to lay yourself at disposal of Christ. No matter what mother says, what dad says, what anybody else says, lay yourself at his feet. Ruth showed her confidence by laying her head upon his feet while he was sleeping. Notice, then I remember the time when I got saved. I remember the time when the angel of the Lord came and told me, go pray for sick people. And a great friend of mine in the denomination I belong to said, Billy, you're going to be a holy roller as sure as the world. My mother said, Why, Billy, you've lost your mind. My poor old dad that died on my arm said, Billy, you can't bring that stuff around this house here. They thought I was crazy. The people, my, I was a single man. My girlfriends that I've been going with thought I was crazy. But I know something happened. I know that I could trust him. No matter what taken place, I believed him. And you have to believe him. Sometimes it causes a total separation Amen. from friends and associates. Amen. But separate yourself from the things of the world and walk with Christ. Ruth wasn't ashamed. She could trust him. I'm not ashamed. Someone said, Billy, aren't you afraid some night that 
Somebody will come up there and you'll make a mistake on the discernment. Never! No, sir. Never afraid. Aren't you afraid to make statements like that uh, from the platform when you're afraid something will take place? No! He promised it. Why, you know, it'll ruin your whole ministry. It's not my ministry to begin with. It's His. It's up to Him to take care of it. It's not me. I can't take care of it. It's He to take care of it. I purposed a long time ago. If the job that was all things work together for the good to them that love Him, I know I could love Him. That's one thing I could do. If I committed all things to Him, if the job's too big for Him, what's the use of me trying? <laughs> sure. He's the one. He's the one who sent it. It's His Word. I don't want to preach my Word. I want to preach His Word. I don't want to say something about myself. I want to say something about Him. So therefore, it's His Word, His power. That's the reason I don't believe that one man can heal another. No such stuff in the Scripture. But I believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has healed every sick person that ever was sick. If they could only accept it, and saved every sinner if they'd only accepted it. But it's your personal faith in Him that you accept and confess. She laid at Boaz's feet, and when he woke and seen the confidence, my, one of these days he will see the confidence that his church has got in him. When he's seen the confidence, he taken his own robe, Holy Spirit, spread it over. It was getting cool. And he spread the, his robe over and sent her on her road. And so did the people on the day of Pentecost, the new church. When they went out there and re- out there wasn't a shame to stood out there waiting for ten days according to his word. Christ! Praise his robe, the Holy Ghost, over the church to protect her and warm her, to keep your heart right, warmed up, and fellowship until the full time of redemption. He said, now there's one thing has to happen yet before you fall heir to everything, the whole harvest and all. He said, I have to do the work of a kinsman before I can call you mine. And so the work of a kinsman, most every scholar here knows what it was to do. The first thing, it had to be a relative, had to be kin folks, had to be a close relation. Now, how is God from Eden, when his people was lost through the law of redemption? Look at that beautiful picture. If we just had time to go through it, I'm pressed terribly. So bear with me. But look. In order for God to redeem His human race, God had to come down and be made a human too. Christ Jesus was God manifested in the flesh. You see what I mean? God was in Christ reconciling the world to Himself. God was made kin folks to the human race. Because he was made flesh and dwelled among us. Then he had to be worthy. And he was worthy. He was the Lord of the harvest. And another thing he had to be, he had to be the right kind of a man. And Jesus was. And then what he had to do after that was call the elders of the city on the outside of the gate. And then he had to lift up an ensign, plucking off his shoe and declaring it before all the elders of the city that he had redeemed Neoma. And in order to redeem or get Ruth, he had to redeem Neoma and all that she had in order to get Ruth. That's the reason Jesus came to the Jews alone. He had to redeem the Jew in order to to get the Gentile bride. You see what I mean? He had to redeem her. And there had to be a public testimony made. And the requirement was death. So God came down and lived in His own Son tabernacle here on earth and was led outside the gates of Jerusalem 
the principal city of the world at that day, religiously speaking, and there was lifted up between heavens and earth before Caiaphas is the high priest and all the elders to show that he had redeemed the church with his own blood. What did he redeem? He redeemed your soul from hell. He redeemed and brought back everything that Adam lost when he put you in the pawn shop. Jesus Christ on Calvary was your kinsman redeemer that redeemed you from every curse of the devil. He redeemed your soul. He redeemed your sick body. He redeemed your weary, dreary spirit. He brought you happiness. He brought you joy. He brought you, that's what the redemption brought you. He brought you peace, long-suffering, goodness, gentleness, meekness, power. The Holy Spirit brought you divine healing. All these things Jesus Christ brought to you because He was our kinsman redeemer. He came to the earth. He suffered as a man. He was tempted in all matters like we are, yet without sin. He became a perfect kinsman redeemer. He suffered in his body, bore our infirmities in his body to take it away, and came down to become kin folks. What is it? God condescending, coming down in the beginning when God spoke to men. In the wilderness journey, he was a pillar of fire. When he settled on a mountain, even if a beast touched the mountain, it must be killed. Then God, the same God, revealed himself in the form of his son, Christ Jesus. And then Christ Jesus, when he died and made the atonement as becoming kin folks to us, has gone away and returned again in spirit form and is in us tonight working the same power, the same blessings, the same things that he did here on earth, promised it to us. And I'm so thankful to know that he's sure tonight to confirm every word of it to be so. Perfect kinsman redeemer. How could you turn such a one away? What if tonight was the last time that you'd have a chance to accept him? And I trust by God's word that you'll see what God had to do to redeem you. And then who are we that would go around and act indifferent towards him? What will we receive at the end of the road? What would it, what good would it do you if you gained the whole world and then would lose your soul? Do you know this may be your last night on earth? And you're standing people without, without anything to stand on. Any excuse. Here's the word first. Here's evidence witnesses. People that's been saved. You that's laying here sick and afflicted, don't be scared. Jesus is here to heal you. You've got to make... He's your Redeemer. He redeems you from sickness. It's yours, if you can believe it. And then after that, He sent His Word. He sent ministers. And He sent His Spirit, performing and doing the same things that He did when He was here on earth to prove that He's raised from the dead and it's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Aaron took the blood of a substitutionary death and went into the holiest of holies with it. But Jesus took his own blood and entered the holiest of holies to redeem you. And to tear down the middle wall of petition that you yourself might come into the Shekinah glory with him and live under the blessings of God. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Someday when life is over, friend... I've often wondered what will take place when all the redeemed of all ages stand around when we crown him the King of kings and the Lord of lords. When angels will stand with bowed heads not knowing what we're talking about. They don't know what it is to sin. They never fell. They don't know what it is to be lost. They never was lost. But we who have been lost and been found and redeemed and claimed back and brought out of the devil's pawn shop by the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ and his sacrificial death, I'm telling you, you talk about screamings and hollerings and going on, it'll be that day when they're redeemed. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Ever since by faith I saw the stream 
Thy flowing wounds supplied, redeeming love has been my theme and shall be till I die. Are you saved tonight, brother? Have you been born again? Do you really know what it means to accept the blood? In the Old Testament, when they killed the lamb, the man went forth after it. His sin, I'm going to close right now. The man, when he killed a lamb, he done something wrong, he took a lamb. He laid his hands up on the lamb and confessed his sins. The priest cut the lamb's throat, caught her in a charger like that, and the man feeling the jerking, quivering flesh of that little lamb dying to redeem him again. He had done wrong, and he realizes that that lamb is dying in his stead, quivering, jerking, until the last life's out of it. The blood then was put upon the fire and burned. The man went right straight back out with the same desire in his heart to do the thing he did when he come in. For the blood of bulls and goats cannot take away sin under that plan of redemption. It was only a shadow. But today, when the worshiper once purged has no more conscience of sin, once place your hands by faith on the head of the Lord Jesus, Feeling the pains of his suffering under Calvary in your stead. Remember, it was your sins that done it. To redeem you, he did it. God himself become flesh so that he could pull the stinger out of death for you. And there when he died and you feel the, the pains of Calvary and what he did. Brother, the reason that man went out with the same thought that he had coming in, the same desire to sin, here's why it was. The life is in the blood. Is that right? And the life of an animal, when the spirit went out of the life, it could not come back and mingle with the human spirit because it was the life of an animal. Therefore, the desire became the same. He went back out. The animal life went away. The blood cell was broke up. But when a man lays his hands upon the blood of Jesus, the head of Jesus, confessing his sin, when that blood cell was broke, it was the Holy Spirit of Christ Jesus comes back up on the man and takes all sin and desire away from his heart and he's perfectly redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ and all the sin question is settled. Amen. Friend, if you say you have been God's child, have accepted Christ and never had an experience, still have a desire, the world in your heart, you just have to battle it daily. Let me tell you, there is a kinsman redeemer standing with his arms open tonight to receive you that will take the world out of you. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, seeing the time going along, had to cut short of the blessings that seemed to be in my heart to bring forth, but yet it's cold in the tent. Many sick people are waiting. But, Father, there may be some sicker than these physical sick. There may be some sin sick. Never as yet. Maybe they belong to church. Maybe they put their name on the book. The same church that their dear old mother died in that same church. But never has yet been born again, never accepted the real precious Holy Spirit in their heart to know what it means to love your enemy and do good to those that do evil to you and have the same kind of an attitude that our Lord and Savior Jesus had. This might be the night, Father, and the last time that you'll knock at the pawn shop door. You're offering yourself tonight to whosoever will let him come. And I pray, Father, as we have our heads bowed all over the building, that you'll speak to hearts just now that's away from God. God, say, child, this, you're the one I'm talking to. It's you, child of mine. I, I'm wanting you to come home. I, I've made every preparation. I'm expecting you to come tonight. And you said, he that comes, I will in no wise cast out. No man can come except my father draws him. And may you knock at every heart just now. And while we have our heads bowed, Christians all praying, is there a person in here solemnly? would raise your hand to the Lord Jesus and say, Jesus, I appreciate you dying for me, and I now accept you as my kinsman redeemer. You become me that I might become you. And now I'm giving over my sinful life. From this night on, I'm going to accept you as my personal Savior right now. My faith looks straight to thee. Will you 
raise your hand and say, by the God bless you, brother. God bless you. Another would raise your hand and say, by this I lift my hand and say, Lord Jesus, God bless you, sister. By this, I, God bless you, sister. Someone else? Raise your hand. Say, by this, I now come to Jesus. God bless you, brother, back there. See your hand. God bless you, my sister. Yeah, I don't think God sees your hand. God bless you over there, man and woman. God bless you. If your husband and wife may home start different. God bless you, young lady. I see you back here, sister. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, brother, and you. That's why. God bless you back there. Someone else, raise your hand to the Lord Jesus, saying, Jesus, this is me. You're knocking at my heart. And I, I know I've, I've wearied and toiled and tossed around. I'm sick and tired of that. I'm coming tonight. I'm going to settle it right here under this tent. I don't know. Tomorrow may be too late. So tonight, while it's time, while many others are coming, I want you to include my name up there on the book of life. I'm going to raise my hand to you that you'll see my hand. And accept me. God bless uh, some of you middle-aged and young and old people. A very sweet little girl may be the child of the parent that just now accepted Christ, raised up high so I could see her and raised her little hand. You say that was wrong? Oh, no. No, her little heart hasn't been callous. She's a baby. Jesus said, suffer little children to come to me. Forbid them not. Will you raise your hand just now anywhere while the Christians are praying? Someone else just before we close. Somebody that has not raised your hand to Christ. God bless you. I see you, lady. God bless you here in the front. I see you, my brother. God be with you. If I fail to see your hand, God does. Some dozen or two has raised their hand now. We're going. God bless you, brother. God bless you, sister. That, that's right. Play, my brother, my faith looks up to thee, will you? Can you give us a part of that? You know the song, do you? My faith looks up to thee. Yes, someone right here, the Spanish lady. God bless you, my sister. Jesus knows you. God bless you, the little Spanish girl. Lord, be with you, honey. May he just ever bless you. That's good. Just holding a moment longer. I know we're late, but tomorrow's Sunday morning. You don't have to get up too early. God be merciful. I see you back there, honey, a little children coming to Christ. Some of these are just little girls and boys, 8, 10, 12 years old. They're little young hearts. Jesus loves you, honey. You know, we're getting too thick here in the world today. Where I'm staying, I can just hear the ambulance hour after hour pouring down the highway, running back to the hospital, right close to the hospital, right by me. And I look and see... People coming in, hear them getting out screaming their loved ones. Some of them drunk, getting out of cars. Getting too fast now. Remember, as a study of nature, the thing is balanced. It won't be long till there'll be a sweep of sickness or a cobalt bomb or something. You'd be awful thinned out around here. That's the way God does it. I believe Jesus will come. Be ready now. Remember, just think. 5,000 years from tonight, every person sitting here will be somewhere. And this might be the time when you'll determine your eternal destination. Think of it. That's just why we have our heads bowed. Think. 5,000 years from tonight, I believe the world will be hanging out under a big sand ball. The winds are screaming across the earth, the hot scorching sands. It'll be blown right into the sun, so says the scripture. The atoms will break, the heavens will burn with fervent heat. The first time in Noah's time, they throw it away from the sun, calls the water. This time, they'll throw it into the sun. Same thing, atomic power. Throw it into the sun, out of its orbit, and there'll be your tombstone laying out yonder. But what about your soul? Where will it be? This may be the time, once more, any person who has never raised her hand, God bless you, sister, just felt that there was somebody else. God bless you, young lady back there. Bless you, honey, the little girl. Little girl, God bless you. Someone else? Good, that's right. God bless you, sister. All right, we're going to prayer. Just as I am, Father, without one plea, but that thy blood was shed.
for me, and that thou bid me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. I come in as a priest standing between the living and dead, and I offer to you, Lord, these trophies of this meeting tonight. These ones who has come and heard the word, flat, hard, stern preaching, but the truth. And they've accepted you upon the basis of your shed blood, upon the reconciliation work of the Holy Spirit, bringing them through the blood to their Savior, the Lord Jesus, who's come and knocked at their hearts tonight. For thou hast said here on earth, no man can come except my Father draws him. And you said, all that come, I'll give him everlasting life. And I'm quoting your words to you, Lord, my loving Savior. You said, he that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life right now. Shall not come into judgment, but done pass from death to life. It's a past tense for all these people then tonight, according to thy word. That's coming from their hearts. They are saved. Shall never come into judgment, but pass from death to life. Father, guide them through life. Send them to some good church to be ministered to by Christian baptism, and then fill them with the Holy Ghost and set them into thy service. I command them to thee, Father, in the name of Jesus thy Son, for their safe journey, good health and strength as they go along, and eternal life in the world to come. Amen. Oh, I just love him, don't you? Now, we're going to start the prayer line for the sick. I want to tell you something. I don't know whether to right now or not. We're in prayer card V's today, a hundred V's. We'll pick the rest of them up tomorrow. We'll get some of them now. V, turn your little card over. It's got a V on it. And there's a... One to one hundred. And we don't usually get too many. You don't have to. It's just the work of the Holy Spirit. How many's never been in one of my meetings before? Let's see your hands. How many people? Now, oh, just look. I'm so happy you're here. It's hard to get it to you just in one message one night. But look, when Jesus was here on earth, he didn't heal any people. He said, I only do what the Father shows me. Is that right? See, the Lord shows the vision. No man, not even Christ's flesh, could glory in the presence of God because no flesh can glory. But the Spirit always, and the Spirit revealed to him for the people what they had done and the things that the Father wanted him to do, he showed him what to do, then he went and done that. Is that the Scripture? St. John 5, 19 said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself. But what he sees the Father doing, he just passed by thousands of crippled and lame and blind folks, and the Father showed him where one man is laying on a pallet. You believe the Father showed him? Why well, he said so. He said he knew he had been this way a long time. And he went to him, healed him. He might have had TB, prostate trouble or something. Had it 38 years. It wasn't going to kill him. But the Father had showed him where to go through this crowd among all these crippled, blind, lame, halt, withered, and healed this one man and walked away and left the crowd laying there. They questioned him. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself, but what he sees the Father doing, that doeth the Son likewise. Is that St. John 5, 19? That he never did one thing until God showed him by a vision. The people pulled God through him by touching his garment and, and so forth. When they had faith, he'd stand, look in the audience, and tell them different things. I know who you are, where you come from, what you did before you come. You had a blood issue. You're healed now. Your faith's made you well. This blind man over here, he's uh, healed and so forth. That was our Lord Jesus saying. Is that right? If he's raised from the dead, he'll be the same tonight. Is that If he's the same, Hebrews 13, 8 said he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, then he's the same in principle, the same in power. All the way around, he's the same. Is that right? And now, if he will come here and do the very same things that he did back there, will you all accept him? as your healer tonight, as these people have. And now to you young converts, you've accepted the Lord just because you believe the Word. Now, watch Him show you that He really is the Lord Jesus, that He's not dead, He's alive, and He's here tonight. 
The Lord be blessed. All right. What was that? V? V? Let's see. Let's get to the last part of them tonight. Who says V? Um, what's that? V, I'm sorry. Or V, like a victory then. 85 to 100. That would be... Who has prayer card 85? Let's see. All right, come right here, ladies. God, that you will help tonight. And now, a very poor is a man for the Holy Spirit. But, Father, who is worthy? None. All sinned and come short of the glory. But thou hast so chosen that some should do one thing and another, to minister to those who are needy. And I pray thee, Father, that you will let the words of our Lord Jesus, which said, The things that I do shall you also. More than this shall you do, for I go to my Father. Yet a little while and the world won't see me no more, the unbeliever. Yet ye shall see me, for I will be with you to the end of the world. Then, Lord, you were to represent yourself in the same manner, by the same things, to the end of the world. And I pray thee, Father, that you'll be so kind as to do that again for us tonight. We ask it humbly in Jesus' name, thy beloved Son, our Savior. Amen. Now, may his blessing. No, no, you can't come in prayer lines without prayer cards. You'll have to come tomorrow and get your prayer cards. It's, you have to get prayer cards to get in the line. It's not fair to the rest of the people. Look out here. How many wants to be prayed for? Raise your hand. All of the building wants to be prayed for. See, that's the reason we have to give prayer cards. See? Now, come tomorrow. You'll get a prayer card if you didn't get it tonight. But you don't need a prayer card. Just sit and look this way and believe with all your heart. That doesn't matter for me to touch. It's whether you touch Christ. Is that right? It's not me. There's nothing in me. I'm just a poor sinner saved by grace. But Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He's the one to touch. All right. Now, we'll start praying for the sick. Now, how many again that wants to be healed and doesn't have a prayer card? Raise your hand everywhere. God bless you. Now, I want to do something. You look this way and believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead and believe that he's sure tonight to do the exceedingly abundantly and you find out if he don't heal and do just exactly what he said he would do. Don't you believe that? Why, certainly he will. He's lovely. He's the fairest of ten thousand. He's the lily of the valley and the morning star. And his grace is from everlasting unto everlasting. He is God. All right. Let the lady come. Are we strange to each other, lady? We do not know each other. Is that right? Now, I want you, everyone, to be reverent. Please, just be real reverent. Sit still. Just kindly watch this way. Pray with all your heart. Dear God, be merciful to the people. And I'm so glad if you're a Christian, say, I'm so glad that I'm a Christian and serving you because all other religions outside of Christian religion is false. Jesus is the only true and living God, is, and he's the Son of God, he is, and he's the only one that is true, is our God. And we're so thankful to know that. All other people, the Buddha and all those, he lived about 2,300 years ago, he made a lot of things, but he died and went to the grave. And all of them say, well, yours did too. Oh, no, ours rose from the grave. They'll say, prove it. Prove it. He said, the things that I do shall you also. Here's the proof of it. That's the reason my ministry is just about finished in America. I see that. When I was talking to Mr. Oregon right some of day in this meeting, my meeting here going thousands of dollars in debt, I told him not to take up a love offering, turn it right into this. I'll send it into a state bar. <laughs> That's right. When it comes time, they won't, my meetings won't support themselves. It's time they get back to Africa, India, or somewhere. See? Now, but as soon as they see the first thing done, they, they believe. 
Here stands a woman, a total stranger, I've never seen her in my life. God knows that. We have no way of knowing one another. Because we, this is our first time meeting, but God knows us both, doesn't he, lady? You are a Christian. Now, if, if this, just like, just take my time with this woman a minute. If this woman here, this is exactly the same prefigure as it was our Lord at the well. I feel so humble when I say that. Thinking that here before the purchase of his blood, I'm making a statement like that with his Bible laying open. That's a great thing, isn't it, lady? And here we are. Something's got to happen. I've either told the truth or I haven't told the truth. Either Jesus is the resurrected Son of God or he isn't the resurrected Son of God. Now, there it is, and probably 2,500 or 3,000 people sitting here waiting to find out whether it is or not. Now, if I've represented it right, I have no fear, because I've represented by his word and what his Bible said. Now, the lady being, as I said, a stranger to me, not knowing her, never seeing her, then God would have to tell me what you're here for if I'd ever know it. Is that right? And if he will, will you believe him? I'm talking to you to catch your spirit, or to get your spirit to catch here. See? You're a Christian. Now, I'm a Christian. And we're standing here as brothers and sisters and never met before. But the same Lord saved you, saved me. Now, there's something you want from God. And you come to me as his prophet, or servant, rather. They're his servant. Now, by a divine gift, I'm trying to help you. And the only way I can is yield myself to the Holy Ghost and your faith pull whatever it is. And God show me what it is. Now, I tell you, that's all I could do. And then if your faith meets that qualification, you'll get what you ask for. If it doesn't, you don't. That's the whole, and the audience the same way. But the lady now, as the Holy Spirit, now in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I take every spirit here under my control. For the glory of God, I be a reverent audience if you're still listening. The lady is very sick, and she's suffering with a, a, a lady's trouble, a female condition, and she's been somewhere far, it's, uh, but they couldn't do her no good. She's been uh, under hospital care. And they've done all they could do, but the doctors just don't know what it is that's a doing it. And now you're supposed to go back to the hospital again for more. And there's someone that's your husband sitting down there. That's right? I've seen a gray-headed man sitting by you, and a light flesh this way, and he's sick too. And he's suffering with rheumatism. That's right. Isn't that right, sir? Or you stand up on your feet. Your rheumatism's gone. Don't go to the hospital. Go to Calvary now. And it'll be over in the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Do you believe? Then receive him right now. Then receive him as your healer. He's yours. If thou canst believe. Little lady there with your hands folded, sitting on the end of the seat, you're very sick, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. You done a gallant thing a while ago. You raised your hand and accept Jesus as your Savior because that you are got a lot to accept him for. You're sitting there, you don't need no prayer card, you, have, you just got your bare hands. But you're fixing to go to a hospital. You've got to go back because everything's wrong with you. You've had a lot of sorrow. I see a little one. You've lost your baby. That's right. And you have to go back to the hospital. Oh, dear God. My blessed Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, thy Son, I bless this poor woman that's suffering. 
and may she be well and comforted because she's given her heart to you. May this be the beginning of a new life right now, and may she be well and healthy. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Rise up to your feet, little mother. God bless you now. Go on your road and rejoice. Everything will be all right for you. Let us say praise the Lord. See, you don't scramble for prayer cards. Reach for Jesus. He's the one. That's all she needs. Her faith setting praying desperately. And the Holy Spirit started to move to this woman and then went right straight to that woman there. And right now, I don't know what was wrong with her. But ever what it is, I knew she'd give her heart to Christ. Jesus said, If thou canst believe, all things are possible. You praise him, sister. You love him. The lady with the gray dress on sitting right back there, kind of gray hair, moving your face like this. Uh-huh. You got some spiritual problems. Kind of hard, isn't it? Do you believe with all your heart? That is true, isn't it? Yes, sir. Do you accept it now? Just remember what I tell you. It's all passed away. Your troubles are over. Your faith has rewarded you, sister, of what you think in the Lord Jesus. Have courage. Don't be discouraged. But believe all things are possible to them that believe. If thou canst believe. Lady, is this the patient? I'm not beside myself, but yet I get mixed up sometimes because it's anointing that I don't understand just what it is myself. We are strangers to each other, are we, lady? We are strange. We do not know each other. But Jesus Christ knows us, doesn't he? Nothing is too hard for our Lord Jesus, is it? He can do all things. Don't you believe that? He certainly can do all things, and he does his work real well. Amen. Epilepsy is a hard thing, but Jesus Christ can heal it if you believe it. You believe it? With all your heart? Amen. Mm-hmm. Arthritis is too, isn't it, brother? Got neck and shoulders. But Jesus Christ can make well. You believe it, brother? And you can receive it. Your face made you whole. Amen. And not only in the role there, that gallbladder trouble, sister, just quit praying. Jesus Christ has already heard. If you believe with all your heart, you'll never have it again. You believe that Jesus makes you well, and your faith has healed you. You see what I mean? Christ, the Son of God, is raised from the dead. He's sure to make well. Give blessings to whosoever will. Let him come. Just a moment now to speak with you, just a moment. Are we strangers to each other? We're standing here, never knew each other, but God knows us, doesn't he? You don't believe I'm reading your mind, do you? No, you don't believe that. I have no way of doing it. God knows your future. I don't. But you're suffering with a nervous condition. That is right. Just about time of life for you to have that. That's right. You got a dark shadow. You may not leave overnight, but have faith. Then you got trouble in your back too, haven't you? That's right. Isn't that true? Now all the doubt's gone now, hasn't it? Here, let me tell you something else that you might know that I be God's servant. You have something wrong, you got a tumor. Is that right? May I tell you where it's at? Under the right breast. 
Is that right? Now, do you believe me to be his prophet? Then go rejoicing and happy. You'll get well, believing on the Lord Jesus. Let's say praise the Lord. Have faith now. Just a moment, a deaf spirit. Oh, be reverent. Bow your head just a minute. It's the lady standing before me. Everyone, bow your head now. I don't know how bad it is or nothing. Just bow your head just a little while and don't raise your head until you hear me tell you to raise your head now. In Jesus' name, keep your head bowed. Our Heavenly Father, Thou knowest all things, and I pray for this, my sister. Feeling the vibration of that evil one that would cause her to be hit by a vehicle somewhere and killed. Her life shortened. But I pray that you'll be merciful to her, not that we have to have miracles to believe, because we do believe. And I now condemn this demon and ask that it leaves her. Come out of her, thou demon in Jesus Christ's name, you deaf spirit. I charge thee by the living God, you can't hold her no longer. Do you hear me? What's your ear? Take it out. Of course, you hear me again? Do you hear me now? You hear me now? Say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Aren't you going to raise your head? Not to see miracles, these vibrators in her ears. You love him now, sister? Yes, I You hear me all right now? I've always believed he healed me. Let me tell you something else now, that you know whether your healing is complete or not. You're in a lot of trouble, aren't you? Yes, You are, you've got a colon condition. It's in your bowels. The doctors want to operate, but they can't because you have a paranitis that wouldn't permit them to operate. They won't have to from now on if you just believe. Do you believe? Now go rejoice, sister. Amen. Let us be thankful to our Lord. Do you believe he has risen from the dead? Have faith. How do you do? We are strangers to each other. As man and woman we are, but you are a Christian, and I am a stranger to you. I'm your brother, because you're my sister, through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And you believe that side trouble left you? you would you accept it if Jesus would heal you, speak to you, make your side well? you believe that God would take care of it? If you can, you can have what you ask for then. Amen. It's just that simple. Just by faith believing. It's all you have to do. Isn't that wonderful, sir? My brother, it's over now. Her faith did that. A husband. When he's seen his wife was healed, but just purely faith believing. Tears rolled to his cheeks, and he reached over and got over the hand, began to hug her up. She bowed her head humbly. Give thanks to God. Certainly that means something. She was praying. When she was saying a few moments ago, something struck her. I never turned. I thought it was a lady on the cot. I was watching to be sure where it was. I thought maybe she might be something wrong in her side. I watched again to see if it was a lady on the cot, and it looked, I've seen the vision here before me, the woman kept praying. I've seen the vision before me, it was a gray-headed woman. I kept wondering where it was. I've seen the light come over here and settle down right there. I said, it's that lady there. That's who it is. That's right. You were praying, wasn't you, sister, and believing? If that's right, raise up your hand so the people can see. That is right. All right. That's right. It's your faith that does it. Not me. I'm just your brother. I only do what he tells me to say. It's your faith of pulling that. That's right. Now, the lady here before me, as I say, I don't know you, lady. If I could help you any way, I'd do it. And if I didn't do it, I'd be a cruel person, wouldn't I? But I can only I'm tell you what Jesus, of Jesus. And I, I'm not much of a preacher, but I I do believe what I say. You're aware of that. 
Now you're all broke down. One thing, you got heart trouble, rectal trouble, nervous, complications. And by the way, you are a minister, you're a preacher, a lady preacher of the gospel. You believe me? Yes, Brother Brown. Or just go on your road rejoicing, I get well. Just don't let that nervousness, that's what's doing the trouble. Just go be happy. Let's say thanks be to, to God. Do you now believe? You have faith, Dad? What about it, sis? You having faith? I want to see you healed, honey, so bad I don't know what to do. There's nothing I can do about it. I know you're troubled, but I can't heal you. See, it's your faith. Just keep moving. You'll do it. Just keep having faith, each one of you. Don't down. What about it, brother? Are you believe it with all your heart, sis? Believe that Jesus Christ will do it for you. Thou canst believe. All things are possible. So, Spanish sister, believe with all your heart. Amen. It's dimming to me now. It looks like it's a whole building. I, my dear people, brothers and sisters, I wish I could explain this. I can't. But it just seems like, to me, maybe I better not even try it. You just believe. You, you just believe now with all your heart. Jesus, the Son of God, great Jehovah God, His own beloved child is here in the form of spirit tonight, just doing the same thing to poor, ignorant people, myself, and people that's unworthy, all of us, and your faith through a divine gift is pulling virtue from Calvary what you have need of. Can't you see it? Oh, my American brothers and sisters, don't lay in this lull that you American people are laying in. Why in India? Let it happen. What's this happen now? Every person on the ground would get up and walk away. Tens of thousands would be healed at one time. That's right. But we, well, we wonder. We're so educated. We're so smart. It's too bad. I don't mean maybe you people here, but that's the spirit of America. We know it all. We know all about it. See? Oh, if you could just get out of that crust and let your heart get smooth and tender before God, that you could realize that your poor, humble brother has nothing to do with this. I'm just yielding to the Holy Spirit in regards to the words of Jesus. He said the same things that I did, you'll do. I'll represent myself with you, plumb to the end of the world, and the same things that I did, you'll do also. He said that, did he? Well, here he is tonight doing it. Let us believe him. Oh, if we could just get away from that. If you could only see what I see, that cold, indifferent, foggy look hanging around, trying, that's what's making you feel. You just can't raise up and accept it all at once because that hangs over you. If I could ever get that broke, if I could ever get the people just in one accord, what would take place? Well, I've seen it. Have faith now. We oughtn't to have to bring anyone else. Your wishes are granted, sister, with your handkerchief to your mouth. Just raise up and accept the Lord Jesus as is right here, little Spanish woman. God bless you. It's all over now. You can go home. Amen. Mm. Simplicity. Is this the patient? You're the man. Come here, my dear one. Do you believe what the things that you see come from God, sir? You do. We are perfect strangers. As far as I know, we don't know one another. That we're strangers, are we? That the audience know we're strangers. But well, dear sir, I know one thing. I, I've got to meet you in the judgment someday. I'll have to stand in your presence again someday. That's right. Now I'll have to give an account for my life here on earth before Almighty God in your presence. That's right.
But Jesus Christ is truly the Son of God that's raised from the dead. There's nothing good about, I'm just the man like you are, see. There's nothing, nothing, no flesh, we're nothing. But it's the Holy Spirit that's here. He comes to the Word, the ministering of the Word. The Word brings him. Then by divine gift of yielding, just knowing which that's between God and I, to yield yourself to know. Now, you're here a man i never seen yet, but there's something you're here for. If it isn't, you'll know right away. See, he'll tell you. See, you perhaps, if you ever in another meeting, one of my meetings, and see how a critic slip in sometime and what happens? See him stand there on a platform and paralyze. And we don't play church. This is God. But if the Holy Spirit will let me know what's your trouble, will you accept it as God wanting to give you what you have need of? Now, here's a man I believe is honest and hard. I have never seen him. God knows all about him. I just to talk to him a minute and see what God would do. It's hard sometimes to single right straight in front of me. It's at least two dozen people praying right now. See? And their spirits are, it's another world, see? And when the vision starts coming, it moves that way, and then I can't detect which one it is. Then I look this way, and you, after so many, you can't tell where you're at, hardly, see? And I'm trying to get you singled out. Now, I keep seeing a woman come before me. I don't know why. It's a woman standing before me. And she's... My brother, it's your wife. You're standing here praying for your wife. I've never seen her in my life till just now. But she's got some kind of a trouble in her bowels that they don't know what to do. Don't you worry. Jesus Christ is going to make her well. Amen. Only thing I ask you to do is have faith. Just believe. If thou canst believe. Here stands a man right here by me. I kept seeing a woman appear before me all the time. I couldn't tell. It would move towards the audience. Then it come here and I looked again and here he was standing by her side. I know it was for her. And you're not here for yourself. You're here for someone else. Grandson of thee. And it's got a head injury, an infection. And he's not here. He's not even in this state. He's in a state where you could pick up dirt and it's dark sand instead of red sand and yellow sand. It's Illinois. That's where he's from. And my dear friend, you have a gallant desire in your heart. You come and want me to lay hands on you that you might receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That is the truth. And Father, may it be so. These desires I ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Go believing, rejoicing. Come, lady. A little water. Um. Uh, you believe, lady? If God will just tell me without speaking too long, I just can't hardly stand. Will you, will you believe with all your heart and go home and believe your kidney trouble section? You'll be well. Let's say praise the Lord for the goodness and mercy of our Lord Jesus. Thank you. Just a minute. All right. Would you come? Heart trouble is not hard for God to heal, is it, sir? You believe he'll make well? Yes. Then in the name of the Lord Jesus, I bless him. And may it be so. For the glory of God. Amen. Don't fear. Go believing, my brother. You shall have what you've asked for. Would you come, my kind friend? You believe me? As God's servant. Some might say, well, you're getting old. That doesn't matter to God. He could strengthen Abraham to have a child after he was old by Sarah. You believe that, don't you? 
So could he make you a new lining in your stomach. You could go eat your supper. You believe that? And if you have believed it, go eat that. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Let us say thanks be to God. Come. Sir, you believe? That old coughing and going on keeps you up and everything else doesn't. Asthma is a bad thing. But Jesus can make you well. Do you believe it? You accept it? Then go as you have believed, so shall it be unto you. Have faith. How do you do, sister? Do you believe? I wish I could heal you. I can't. Your faith can. You believe that? Go believing, and arthritis will never cripple you up. You'll be well. God bless you. Let us say praise be to God who gives us the victory. It must be time for me to go. Let me have this one more person, will you, just a minute? Just stand there, just a minute. You're the patient, aren't you, lady? Don't know you? Never seen you in my life, I guess. But God knows you, doesn't he? Do you believe me to be his servant? The audience will accept the same thing? Then listen to what I tell you. God's attitude towards every one of you is the same. Just passing those people through, the more you talk to people, the more you know. If you just, just a moment, everyone be reverent. Here's an elderly woman standing before me, perhaps to be my mother at her age. I don't know her, never seen her. She's a stranger to me. They were fixing to take me from the platform. But something told me to stop you just a minute. Oh, God told you today that I was going to pray for you. He never lies. He can. All right, then let us see what he will tell you. Yes, ma'am. I see you moving away from a table. It's food you're rejecting because you have a stomach trouble. And that stomach trouble is caused by a gallbladder. That's right, isn't it? A gallbladder leaking into it makes bitter and acids in your mouth and things from your food. That is the truth. It seems like there's somebody I see you with. It's a sister, and she's blind, and she's been that way for years, and you're wanting me to pray for her. If that's true, raise your hand. Then believe. Oh, God, be merciful, I pray, and give this woman her desire through Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Go receive what you've asked for. And to you, my beloved brother and sister, do you believe Jesus has risen from the dead? He's here now. It's him. He's here. The creator of heavens and earth is in our midst tonight. Not because I'm here. We are Christians, believers. Won't you now accept him?